Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another one. I almost have like the jitters for this video because ah, this is something that I have seen other people do and I never really thought about what, what I dream of for my own mothership palette. And with Mothership 10 looking like it's gonna be here soon, I really wanted to sit down and think what would be my vision for that palette? If I could have anything I wanted from Pat McGrath, what would it be? And that's what we're talking about in this video. So if you wanna see my vision for the Mothership 10, keep watching and let me know what you think. If makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I would love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So y'all, I'm excited. Now, as of right now, I haven't even been on Instagram at all today, but yesterday there was a reel. So today is July 6th. So yesterday on the 5th, there was a reel where, you know, you saw the sequins and the nails and all that. And at first I was like, oh, that's Utopian Dream. And then I pulled out my Utopian Dream palette to look at, to look at the packaging. And I saw that there was no um, satellites there was no blue pastel blue in the upper left corner of the palette if you're looking at it straight up and then the the girl you know who's always on her motherships or most of them she does not have on sunglasses so i was like okay this is something else i think it's mothership 10 pat mcgrath we need you we need you to come through for us but until then i'm gonna just go ahead and dream a girl can dream so i not only have i just pulled out shades no i mean i've got a theme i've got inspo i've got shade names so i love doing this because even when i did my video duping the pat mcgrath special shades i love showcasing pat mcgrath as well as all the other indie brands that i have come to love so this is going to be kind of the same thing and i really really hope you enjoy it and this just i guess gives me a, a window into what creators do when they collab on a palette or when they come up with ideas i love the process uh, both of my boys are sick with covid can't really do anything so i really spent the greater part of yesterday, well, Marky's fine now, but uh, he's just been, you know, chilling out, eating everything. August has been, you know, sleep a lot and stuff like that. So spent the, the greater portion of yesterday dreaming up this palette. And I hope you like what I came up with. So without further ado, let's get into it. I mean, what are we waiting for? Now, Mothership 10 in my mind has to be something epic. It, it has to be something different. I mean, 10 is just a significant number in teaching terms. 10 is a friendly number, so it is special. And I just was like, we need something that is, is phenomenal. Let me present to you my mothership 10, and it is called Divine Earth. And here, my friends, is what it looks like. I'm gonna go over all 10 shades. I'm gonna swatch them. I'm gonna tell you why I chose the shades. And then we're gonna get into a couple of looks with this baby here. Yes. I worked really hard on my uh, thumbnail. <laughs> and all I did, it wasn't anything fancy. So to make the thumbnail, all I did was, I used Pick Monkey to make my thumbnails. And basically I just took the Divine Rose palette and I just took screenshots of all of the shades um, from the website, the brand website. And then I removed the background and then I just reduced the size so that they fit right into the eyeshadow slots or pans. And that's how I did the thumbnail. In case you were wondering, it wasn't Photoshop, it wasn't anything serious, but it was fun to do. And I, I, I just had to, y'all, I just had to. So Divine Earth, y'all, 
So let's start with shade number one. I'm gonna take this down just one. It was really dreary in here before and I thought it was gonna rain, but now the sun is out, so I'm getting a little natural light. So this is shade number one, and this is Skin Show Pink Sands. Now, if you're familiar with the Pat McGrath palette layout, she usually has a skin show shade in the upper left corner of the palette. So skin show pink sands. And unfortunately, this is a discontinued shade by Terra Moons called Sandbar. Now, there's one that's similar to this that I have called Wicked Rose that I believe is still available, but Sandbar is no more and it is such a beautiful shade. Now, the reason that I called it Skin Show Pink Sands the inspiration came from the pink sand beaches. Going out of order here, Divine Rose, you know, and this rose theme has been such a prominent uh, theme throughout Pat McGrath's now not only palettes, but her blushes, her rose essence. So I wanted to, to take that Divine piece and make more of a color story that was earthy and that showed some of the most beautiful phenomena that we have here on our planet. And, and that's what it came from. So I should have said that in the beginning, but yes, Divine Earth, that is why that is the name of this Mothership 10 for me. And so the pink sands come from the pink sand beaches. Now, we have pink sand beaches in many locations, but the one that I saw when I looked at the picture was in the Bahamas. I'm gonna be putting some pictures up, but the picture that I saw was from Harbor Island, which is in the Bahamas, which I didn't see that when I went to the Bahamas. So I would love to visit a pink sand beach. I have been on this travel kick lately, and I was telling Tyrone and, and maybe a couple of my friends, I thought by this time in my life, I would have been more places, you know? I've been to the Bahamas, that's the only place outside of the country that I've been. And I don't wanna say only, like to say like, oh, I haven't been anywhere because I know tons of people, students, adults that haven't left their state or haven't left, you know, a certain region of, of the country. So I am blessed and fortunate, but traveling is something that is very, very important to me. And it's something that I haven't been doing, especially due to COVID. So I have just been dreaming about going different places and what I wanna see. There are certain places that I've always had on my list and there are certain places I'm discovering like, wow, I would love to go here. And here is Skin Show Pink Sands also known as Sandbar from Terra Moons. And that's gonna be the first shade in the palette. There is, let your stomach settle for about 10 minutes and then I'll bring you some more. I love that you're eating, but we know, we're not gonna go full force now because the next thing you know. This is shade number two and I have named this shade Arch. And this is a Sydney Grace matte and the name of it is Peanut Butter. The inspo for the shade Arch was from Arches National Park which is in Utah. And there are these just natural arches that are just amazing. There are so many, they have different names. I can't remember all the names, but like there's one called Rainbow Bridge. They are fascinating, fascinating structures. And a lot of times when you see the arch, when they do the pictures, you'll see them at sunset and they look bright red, but like they're not all that color. Some of them are this actual color and that's why I'm calling this shade Arch. In Pat McGrath palettes, she always has a very, very good transition shade. I don't know why I can't say it. And I thought that Arch would be that. And with this being Divine Earth, I wanted it to be an earthy brown transition. And those are my go-to type transition shades. I'm gonna stop saying transition because I'm tongue-tied at the moment. And there is Arch also known as Peanut Butter by Sydney Grace. Next, we have a shade that I'm calling Canopy. And this is also by Sydney Grace. It is the shade Sutter. Um, you know, the rainforest okay. has... You're done your exam? Yes. What did you write? Story. Ooh, story, story. He to yes. Nice. He's gonna need your help. So oh. help him, August, show him what the right answers are. Okay, 
ahead. Marky, that's a whole nother video. Okay, so. You see, they're feeling better. The rainforest, the canopy layer of the trees, which you see from overhead. I just thought this was a great color to represent that. Another place that I would love to visit. You know, the rainforest has its different layers and I thought Sutter would be a great shade to represent the rainforest. And so, there is our third shade, Canopy, AKA Sutter by Sydney Grace. All right, y'all. I know you can't really tell what it's gonna look like so far, but I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so the fourth shade, uh, if you're familiar with Pat McGrath, so let's, let's look really here. We are getting into the special shades. So the two top special shades are gonna be the fourth and fifth shade. So this is gonna be the Blitz shade. And I'm calling this one Blitz Borealis. And you might already know what inspired this shade, but just look at all of those color shifts. Blitz Borealis is actually Solar Expansion by Terra Moons. My inspiration for Blitz Borealis are the Northern Lights. It is something I have set in my mind to see at some point. And I just think the shades and the shifts in this really are representative of the Northern Lights. And here you see Blitz Borealis, also known as Solar Expansion by Terra Moons. What I love about this is there's a green to kind of deep burgundy red flip here. I think you can see it like right there. And there's all these beautiful sparkles throughout. It just reminds me of like with the Northern Lights, all the beautiful colors that that you can see all right my second special shade this is going to uh, round up the top row of my mothership i call this one astral masquerade now astral masquerade is actually by terra moons and it is the shade interstellar and the inspo for this one is actually from the octopus i didn't want to call it astral camouflage this goes back to when i tried out the indigo ink palette by menagerie cosmetics and a lot of times with their promo they will show like on instagram little posts little videos of what inspired their palette i had no idea that an octopus could change colors i don't know how i grew up not knowing that but the picture uh, that, or the video was like, the octopus was doing one thing and then it shrunk down and, and changed colors, like from a light color to like this deep purple. I didn't realize that they could change color or texture and texture, not or texture, color and texture to fit their environment by like changing how they control their muscles and like that they can control the pigments in their bodies. And I think that is amazing. I had no idea until I bought that uh, Indigo Ink palette from Menagerie. So thank you to Menagerie because I really didn't know that. And so I picked Interstellar because that particular octopus had like, it changed to like this deep, blue purple type situation and I just thought that was amazing. I thought astral camouflage did not sound good and astral masquerade sounds really intriguing, really mysterious, you know? So here's astral masquerade and again, this is another sparkly duochrome and you can see it flashing and shifting from the purple to the blue and just these beautiful, um, these beautiful fine sparkles that uh, these two shades have definitely make them special shades. I just thought it would be perfect for this palette. So this is the top row and now we're gonna go to the bottom row. Okay, so, so now we're on the bottom row, shade number six we are going to call Extreme Midnight. Now, Pat McGrath always has a deep shade. Now, Pat McGrath always has a deep shade on the bottom left-hand corner of her palette. There's Extreme Aubergine, there's Extreme Black. Uh, there, there's just different ones that she has. And I wanted a navy. And as a matter of fact, when I decided I was gonna come up with my own mothership, believe it or not, this was the very first shade. I said it has to be a navy because we've seen 
the browns. We've seen a lot of those deep browns. We see those browns sometimes in her um, quads as well, maybe in some of the six pans. And I was like, no, we, we, we're gonna have a brown, but we are not gonna have that deep brown in the bottom left-hand corner. We're not doing that. That's why I really liked um, Extreme Aubergine, which is in the Mothership 5. I really, really like that shade. This is like that deep eggplant color, and I thought it was different. So I wanted to have something completely out the box. I don't think Pat McGrath has a matte navy shade. So Extreme Midnight is hashtag it's a boy by Sydney Grace. The inspo for this, I wanted it to be more than like the deep sea, you know? So I typed in deep blue sea, of course the movie came up. Why he said I'm trying? Okay, I want you to take a break with him. I want you to take a break with him and then I'll come back and help you. So I was like, okay, not the movie. But then I got into reading about the Mariana Trench. I never heard of it. And it is a trench in the Pacific near Guam. It is about seven miles deep. And they just talked about like the pressure from that amount of water would just like crush all your bones. I don't know if any anyone can can be down there. And I was just thinking, that is the deepest of deep. This is like, I'm trying to have a moment and I can't even have a moment. That's where the inspo for, for this came from. And um, I would love to read more about the Mariana Trench because I did not know about it. And um, I, I love to learn and it just makes me really curious. And so that is why this shade is here. All right, and here we have Extreme Midnight also known as hashtag it's a boy by Sydney Grace. So the next shade that we have is Mayan Sunset. This is actually the shade Aztec Ruins by Sydney Grace. I think this one is discontinued as well. I picked the name because I came across a Mayan pyramid at sunset and this, this is the exact color. And I was like, this is gonna be the name, Mayan Sunset. The Mayan pyramids are located in Mexico and I definitely would love to, to see those ruins one day. And also, you know, I love these orangey bronze colors. So I definitely wanted to have one in my palette, in my mothership. All right, next we do have a deep brown and I'm calling this shade Bark. And the shade Bark is actually Chocolate Raspberry Fudge by Sydney Grace. And I'll put in the description box whether or not um, the shades are discontinued because I know a couple of them are. I just can't remember about this one. I wanted to have a deep brown. I wanted it to be a brown that if you diffuse this out, you could use it for a transition shade if you wanted to. It's not gonna be as light as Arch. So that's why I picked this and I, I needed to have this. I wanted to have an earthy brown. And so the inspiration is tree bark and I got into looking at all these different pictures of different types of bark that trees have. And I saw this beautiful picture of like trees in winter when they have lost their leaves and everything against the snow. That contrast I think is so beautiful. So I really wanted this shade uh, to be in the palette. I think this shade really helps to create that earthy vibe that I want this palette to have. All right, so there is Bark Chocolate Raspberry Fudge by Sydney Grace. And we have two more special shades. Now shade number nine, I am calling VR Aurora Flame. I did use this as a dupe for one of the shades in uh, one of the Pat McGrath palettes in my recent video. So you may remember me um, showing you this. This is Polaris by Davina. This is one of the Aurora flares. And so VR Aurora Flame, you can see that, is also inspired by the Northern Lights. And you know, there are so many different color changes um, when you see the Northern Lights or when I've seen them like on YouTube videos and stuff. So I like to look at things like that. I just thought that would be a great name for this shade. And just look how wet and beautiful this shade looks. I mean, just without swatching. And um, I don't know if you can see that fuchsia there. So that's that, that flame, you know? 
so there's Polaris and you can see hopefully because I'm looking at it and I see like a deep blue and a purple but when I'm looking in the monitor we I see this like beautiful teal color this is a gorgeous gorgeous shape and the Divina Aurora flares are some of the, the the earlier indie shades that I that I ever had so it, it is hard sometimes for things to measure up when you start with something like this this is beautiful all right you guys we are at the last shade and it is a special shade I call this shade LV strip 001 so you know what that's named after this is galactic blossom by Terra moons I named this shade after the Las Vegas strip I think out of every place I've been <laughs> I've been to Las Vegas the most. It is one of my favorite places. I have probably been there 10 times. And one of the things that I just love about Las Vegas is um, all the beautiful lights, all the beautiful hotels, the Bellagio, the Luxor, just everything everything that you can see on the strip at nighttime and being out there at the mirage seeing the volcano it's amazing and vegas has like a really special place in my heart i think my senior year of college we went there for a week i'll never forget uh, we were in the elevator and we were staying in a hotel that's that's torn down now so and so how long are you here we were like six days and they were like you guys are really bold and now i know what they mean because like there's a lot going on in vegas we went from that and and going pretty much every summer because i have a lot of family in california meeting in las vegas to having kids and bringing them to las vegas so it's all here and myself. We are two to the point. A documentary? Yes, I have it. Oh, and he's done. Go ahead, Marky, you can go too. Yeah. Las Vegas, so, you know, starting with Marky, you know, we were going every year, and so having the experience as a single person with no kids is completely different from having kids, but didn't really realize how family friendly Vegas can be. You know what I mean? And I'm not a gambler. The other thing that I love about Vegas, and I'll show you the whole palette, is uh, the ability in Las Vegas for reinvention. And I remember going to one of the malls uh, where it was like a photographer or something like that had a, a store in the mall and one of the pictures was where they um, blew up the stardust which was a hotel that I had been to and spent time in and um, it's not there anymore but you know a photographer captured the explosion of that hotel there's always reinvention going on in Las Vegas no matter what and like it's it's always okay to start over to reinvent to make things new and I just had to have a shade in my palette for that because it's just a place that's really near and dear and I thought the brightness of galactic blossom was just really uh, representative of that and you know I, I looked at other city that I was trying to think of other cities because I, I debated Times Square being one and then I was looking at just some other cities. I looked at um, Tokyo, which has that area that looks kind of like Times Square. And there are cities all over the world that have beautiful lights and beautiful views. So even though I named this after Vegas, Vegas is probably one of the, of the most popular attractions in the world. There are so many. And so this shade is representative of all of that. I feel like a kid's coming. Today, I would get out of there with Manha. With Manha? Yes. Oh, okay. Marky, you're not going to that school? He said Manha. He said Manha. Manha, I don't know if Manha's going to that school. Let me finish this and I'm going to come talk to you. Because you're going to know, you know your buses. What's your new bus number? 299. And while you were out there in the thing, 299 came up here and I saw the bus driver. But you were in the room doing your thing. So they'll be here Monday because you're going on Monday. That, that's what we are doing. Okay, close my door, please. I just, I gotta get through this. You know, kids, they make it hard to have a moment sometimes, y'all. But here's my mothership, you guys. This is my mothership 10. I think if she came out with something like this, 
people, we would be beside ourselves. We would, because this is so different than anything that we've been getting from Pat McGrath lately. Uh, this, this is really bringing me back to Mothership 1, Mothership 2, Mothership 3, Mothership 5. Uh, it's, it's taken me to some of those beautiful, beautiful six pans, those, those early six pans that came out before I even knew who Pat McGrath was. And, um, you know, I had to have all of those, you know, and that's what this has taken me back to. And I, I would be beside myself if she came out with a color story remotely like this. What I like about this is that because I have been going for kind of these more neutral looks lately, you have that in there. Like you have this shade here, you have this one, and you have the sandbar shade where you want like an everyday, I, I gotta go to work, you got that. But then you have like these special shades that you can use to just enhance them, to do an inner corner highlight, to put all over the lid, to, to use as a topper. Like all of these shades are gonna stand on their own. You could do all matte. You can do your little bronzy look if you wanted that. But there's still something for the blue and purple and green lover in there because I love green, but y'all know blues are not my thing. But a navy blue matte, I, I do enjoy a navy blue matte. The interstellar, the kind of shifty purple blue, I, I think I would really enjoy using that as well as Polaris. I think that's gonna be another great shade where I can still have a little bit of blue, but it's not overly blue because it's got that green in there. But then it also has that purpley, like multi-chrome fuchsia flip in it. So I could go on and on. When I think about this color story, I don't have a palette with this color story. I mean, I do now, but I don't, I don't have this color story. This color story would have everything that I need for pretty much any occasion. And I think it is really representative of our planet, right? So that's my palette. Let's go ahead and get into a look. Let's do two looks. Let's do one on each eye. Have not played with this at all. Have no idea uh, what kind of looks we can come up with, but I, I just, I know this is the one for me. I hope that she surprises us, you know, with what's on the inside, but we shall see. Really quick before we get into these looks, y'all, it looks like the day this video is going up, we're gonna see this palette. Look at this, we're gonna see it, y'all. It says new moon rising, all will be revealed tomorrow. Ooh, y'all. What is she gonna give us, y'all? New moon rising. Let, let me, let me, let's get into this look. Cause I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm all flustered now. I'll tell you what I did like. I like that music that was in that reel. We'll see. We'll see what we get y'all. But for now, I'm gonna just go ahead with what I got. Okay, you guys, let's get in to two looks y'all. I'm excited. So I am gonna start with the shade Arch here and I'm gonna enjoy it using the Sonia G Classic Crease Brush. Looks like that. I don't have a Pat McGrath mirror. Maybe we can get some merch. I need some new merch. I need some merch, how about that? I got a few buttons, but that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and use this as our beautiful transition for the first look. Just tapping this in and bringing it almost up to the brow bone. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it out here. Let's next go into Bark with the same brush. Just gonna go ahead and tap this into the outer corner, giving us a little smokiness. Let's get into one of the special shades. We're gonna go into Blitz Borealis, which is our Terra Moons Solar Expansion with a finger. And let me just zoom in so y'all can see the beauty. And Terra Moons just has a way of making these creamy shifty shades. They're not dry. They are just so beautiful. And just look at that. So like, you know, you've got your neutral shades, 
but just being able to enhance it with a color such as this one I, I love that I mean and it, it's just with such ease because you have the multi-chrome like I can look and see that fiery flame Let's see if you can see it though because I'm talking about it that fiery flame here and the green like I don't, I don't have to turn my head I can I can just look like this and you can see it I love that this is why I want to get the new Terra Moon singles but I don't know if I need to do that. Trying to convince myself that Black Friday is right around the corner, but it's probably not gonna feel like that on Friday. Mm, like, I love that. This look, oh, it, it really needs nothing else. It needs nothing else. It needs a little more of the bark shade here on the outer corner. We don't wanna do too much because I don't wanna put on another shimmer and, and diminish seeing the beautiful uh, transformation with this shade. So I was thinking about the Skin Show shade. I don't know if I wanna use that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm taking Skin Show Pink Sands now Sorry, I was just kind of experimenting, but I, I'm gonna take that and use that to go ahead and highlight the brow arch. Just gonna blend that out a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks really good. So that was our pink sand shade sandbar. And now let's get into the under eye. Going back into arch where we started, gonna just put that underneath the lower lash line. I am going to take this eyeliner brush by e.l.f. And by the way, the shade that I used or the brush that I used for the lower lash line was just this Glam Light Flat Shader. This is also really good for uh, shimmer, laying down the shimmer. But I want to go into Canopy here, Sutter by Sydney Grace. And I just want to see if I can take this liner brush and just put it here. I'm just going to be a little hint of color. Now try to stamp it in so that we see it. And I just think that just adds a little hint of something else. You know what I mean? Doesn't have to go under the whole lower lash line. We can just have it merge into the arch shade. And last but not least, we need the inner corner. Point, point. And I am going to go ahead and go into LV Strip 001. We're just going to look at that. Please respect my privacy at this slime. I realize I haven't said that lately, but this shade calls for it. This is gorgeous. I'm also kind of bringing it into our first shade a little bit. So it's not really staying in inner corner. But I also love that it's kind of really merging well with Sutter, AKA Canopy right here. Yes, yes. This is look number one. Let me know your thoughts. Let's go right into the second look. So I am gonna focus on trying to showcase some of these deeper colors and I just have to figure out how I wanna do that. I am gonna use Arch again, just because I want to have something for Extreme Midnight to blend into, so I don't wanna start with Extreme Midnight first. It's not even so much about laying down a whole lot of color, but I, I do want to have a little bit, just a little something. I think this is gonna be a nice color to blend with. I think blues and browns look really good it's like the ocean meets the sand all right so we're just gonna leave it like that and i'm gonna uh continue to use the sonia g brush and let's go into extreme midnight and let's just see how we're gonna do this now i'm gonna just start in the outer corner could use a uh, crease brush could do that but I've already started with this and I am just going to build this. I am not putting a whole lot of pigment on the brush because I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to actually um, use, but I think that looks really good. And what I love about this is, you know, I probably could, let's see, let's just take what we have on the brush 
and diffuse it up into the arch shade. And you can see that we can use this blue as a transition shade, which is great. And that's going to add a, a whole nother level to the palette because now we have a blue that we can use as a transition. Whereas initially I was only thinking about this as an outer corner or smoke shade. I think I'm going to leave it here. Somebody's calling me. Oh, it's potential spam. Do y'all get a lot of potential spam calls lately? Because I'm like, I'm not answering that. Like, why do people think I'm going to answer a call that says potential spam? Because I didn't set my phone to say that. Like, it just comes up as that. Okay, this blue looks good. So now we got to get into some, some special shades. I want to start with Astral Masquerade. I couldn't remember that fast. And let's just go in with a finger. Now I'm going to use this on the inner part of the lid. I'm going to try to just keep it there because I'm going to go into Polaris. <clears throat> let's get into Polaris. Let's do that. But there's Interstellar. So you can see kind of the purple there and I can see the blue sparkles. I think that's going to be a nice little segue into Polaris. I'm bringing it up into the crease a little bit because it's not going to hurt. And honestly, you could just put that all over the lid and be done. Like that could be it. But we are going to go into Polaris. I want you to just see like just how beautiful. And these shades feel like silk. That's exactly what they feel like. I can't describe them any other way. I'm going to take it all the way to the outer corner because I think the more of this shade I have on, the more of the uh, color flip you're going to see, especially with this one kind of being that extreme duochrome. And I can't tell sometimes if things are duochromes or multichrome. Somebody was like, that's a multichrome. I'd be like, my bad. Probably is, you know, <laughs> what I like about this. Let me show you now. I'm going to take a refer 13 brush right here and I'm going to go into Polaris and show you like you can use Polaris with a brush. And to be honest, if you want to do a one and done, you could do that with Polaris. So like now I'm using it and I'm actually covering up. It's a boy looks like so and that's OK, but I just for the purposes of this, I want to show you how you can just really take this just to another level. And then I'm going to go with the Sonya G and just diffuse this out. Like, you know, we think about these shades as like these shifty shades and like, yes, they are that they are, but you can use them almost like a mat too, you know, if you want to. And I just like, cause I want to see all of that goodness. I want to see all of that. And it's, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, if you only have the shade in like one little concentrated area. So just trying to get the most out of it. I'm taking a little bit of arch and just kind of blending it together. So as you see, I did cover up a lot of uh, It's a Boy. So I'm going to go back into that. And I know I know I'm using these uh, names interchangeably. So It's a Boy Extreme Midnight, taking it on a shader brush. And let's just go into the lower lash line. So we're going to just connect it here and just connect with Polaris. And let's just bring it on under. Let's do that. So I actually think I've used every shade except for Aztec Ruins or, and uh, you know what I, I called it Mayan Sunset. Let's see if we can incorporate that in this palette in this look rather because I, I can't leave one out like I see if it, I can see if it was like three shades. Well, we're not gonna leave one shade out. We don't do that. Mm -mm. All right, so I'm taking a Morphe smudger. See if we can take Mayan Sunset and hopefully not mess up the look. Kind of using it as an inner corner highlight, but just as I did with Galactic Blossom, I'm just kind of outlining the inner corner in a way. And I think that that's a nice contrast. Let's take a little more interstellar here because since we brought Polaris up a bunch, I, we can really see that. But I think Interstellar got a bit covered. So let's just mix it all. I mean, let's just do it. They're very complimentary shades. We just go back and make sure this blends nicely. I think that's it. I could do the sandbar up in here for the brow bone again. 
let's just do that this is like galactic goodness this is like earthy realness yes all right there are the two looks y'all probably already know which one is my favorite but i i love them both so let's go ahead and i'm gonna finish the eyes off camera just with my liner and mascara and then i'm gonna wrap it up y'all why is it like an hour later and i didn't realize that i didn't um film the end of the video so that would have been a mess okay <laughs> here are the two looks all i did was use a ColourPop brown liner on both eyes and some mascara look who's eating you can pour the sprite now it's, you, you'll be able to do it now He is feeling better, y'all. Oh my gosh. Thank God. Praise God. Thank you. Yes. I cannot ask. I'm just so happy that he is feeling better. Okay. Well, you guys, I'm not going to hold you too much longer. I am really thankful that you have been here this long. And I hope that you enjoy just imagining up this palette with me i really had fun creating it and um, i would love to do that again i mean i do do it every month for the byop palettes but not to the extent of like coming up with shade names and thinking of all the inspo that was really really fun so i hope you enjoyed it and we just have to wait and see what this palette it is going to look like. I'll probably put in a picture and maybe a comment. I'm not sure about this new palette. Okay, you guys. You know so I'm almost done editing the video and um, I got a whole bunch of <laughs> IG, uh, you know, uh, alerts. So I'm looking at the new palette. <clears throat> Um, okay, so it's Mothership X Moonlit Seduction. Slay the summer with 10 starlit shadows presented in decadent colors and seductive finishes ranging from velvet mats to moonlit metallics and alluring astrals. Silky smooth textures glide effortlessly, effortlessly onto the lids offering beautiful blendability with buildable multi-dimensional brilliance. All right, okay, here are the shades. Where do I start? I think that the astral shades are gonna be really nice, but the, the mattes that she included are the same kind of mauve and brown um, shades. So I do, I do wish that um, she switched that up a bit. It looks like Divine Rose with astrals with more astrals you know what i mean so it was like i don't know because i always said divine rose too was like kind of divine rose for the person who wanted color and then utopian dream i don't even know what that was i don't know what this is <laughs> uh i think for the 10th mothership i think it's beautiful but i think i also curbed my expectations I, and i wanted to record this right away so it could be like my accurate first impression thoughts I curbed my expectations on what I thought we were gonna get this time. And so I kind of feel just like whatever, you know what I mean? Will I probably get it? I, I probably will, I don't know. I have to think about whether or not I'm gonna get it at launch or not. Like I didn't get the Utopian Dream one right away. So I'll see, but this was a letdown for the 10th mothership. I mean, if you wanted to come out with this for 11 or 12 or, or something else, or come down like come down the line like with a blast from the past and 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 have this that would have been okay but i i think what was i expecting i i wasn't expecting the palette that i made but as i continued to think about it and i was chatting with makeup craze last night we were thinking it was going to be something cool toned and along the lines of um subversive because having a part two to subversive, I think would be incredible. So it's just kind of along the same pink line. And I think that, um, I don't know if this is where, you know, she's going to stay kind of in this reminding me a bit of uh, Charlotte Tilbury, how it's that same, 
you know, vibe every time. I just, like, that is who Charlotte Tilbury is. I don't expect any other um, colors, anything other than, like, pillow talky type stuff, you know. And if that is what Pat McGrath is turning into, then I, I just won't be expecting anything else anymore. Um, so, yeah, those are my initial thoughts. I'll probably continue thinking about it. I don't think it's ugly. Um, I can't wait to see a real picture without all the glitz and the sparkles because that I, I don't like all of that. I just want the real swatches without the extra lights and everything else because I think those astrals are going to be really nice. And I think for people that prefer palettes, that's going to be great because all you do need are a couple basic shades. I just wish that the basic shades weren't like pink and mauve based. It just could have given us a little a little something different with the um with the mats so all right that's it that's those are my initial thoughts so i'm gonna finish wrapping up the video you know you will definitely hear my thoughts for the uh purchaser pass this weekend but that's it for this one y'all thank you so much again for just giving me a little of your time i really hope this was therapy for you it always is for me and until i see you again make sure you are being gentle with yourself Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.